Cool. So sitting here with William Maxwell, how's it going? Good. Nice to meet you, Wes. How are you doing? Likewise. Very good. Um, yeah, well, I, I, I usually start these off by asking uh, what uh, has been your go-to song this week. Just curious. Oh, my God. I, um, I haven't really been listening to too much music, but uh, I do have uh, not a guilty pleasure, but whatever you'd call that if you're not guilty about it, a pleasure. I listen to, I like to, I've really been getting into talk radio in the mornings when I drive to work and talk radio in the afternoons when I drive home from work. Uh, it just really fascinates me. And that's kind of my go to uh, feel good or bad um, time. <laughs> when, cool. Yeah, I, I can't really, I just haven't listened to too much music this week. Nice. Yeah, I, I can, I can respect that as a radio DJ. Um, <laughs> uh, is that, do you think that has any bearing on like, um, you have that track in your song, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, the the love seat with Spanky yeah. D. Yeah. Is that, do you think that's like, that played a role in like you putting that on the album? Do you think you were just like really into talk radio at the time? Um, for that, I was really into a particular talk radio host that was um, always the time I was on the highway at night. Um, and that, I'm, uh, the host was Delilah. I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but Delilah, and uh, she like does this like kind of like a love advice or just kind of like general life advice thing in the evenings. And uh, I just that's why that was on the record, and I I really loved that. It kind of fascinated me because I you know you I feel like you hear about those things, and then when you actually hear hear them on the radio, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard any like uh like call in for advice shows like it's, I've never... it's she's awesome yeah is it is it a local station um i that was i forget what station she's on but yeah she is i i think she used to be from dallas but now i think she lives in austin she might Very still cool. be based out of dallas i don't know actually we'll have to look it up <laughs> i'll check it out later <laughs> um so yeah i guess i, I want to talk uh about the album before we get into like some stuff about Austin so like what uh what what does the lifespan of um your new album it's been here changing for a long time look like and like how would you characterize the like progression from your last album to this to this one um like how long did it take to make sort of thing yeah just like how um how, you know what does the it live <laughs> no like <laughs> how so like yeah what 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 does the life of the record look like so like from inception to like yeah. um you know writing and recording and all that stuff um i think um there was one song on there that was kind of like a one that i had maybe a couple of years ago um but really mo like the bulk of it started probably like the december of or like the first thing I really remember doing was um, the and probably I can't even think about time right now. Probably like a year and a half ago, and that's when I went over and the one song that I really had a lot of like I had someone else produce it was um, I went over to his house and um, that was I think that was like the winter of December 2019, and then the most of it started I started. I had a lot of those songs probably like the spring of probably like two years ago to a year and a half ago, but I really started recording like about a year ago, a little over a year ago this time, like maybe February of last year before anything. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, the plan was to put out this record uh, last June and then, you know, hopefully tour and do some fun stuff. And then it took me, and then I was like, all right, the, you know, COVID started and I was like, all right, I'm going to definitely have this done. This will be great. And then I was like, all right, I'm just going to kind of take a while. I had it done in like August and then I took a few months to like really finish it till like December. And so I would say it's about like the whole thing is maybe about two years old in songwriting and production and stuff like that, but kind of done. And a lot of those songs are old, but I never like finished them. I just would play them a lot and try to figure out what they sounded like. So very cool yeah. yeah 
How, what uh, can you talk about the decision to release with porch fire yeah um i was looking for someone to help me get my music in the world and um but i wanted someone that cared about it and uh speaking with will clark of porch fire um he was very easy to work with and talk to and he got down with it really quickly and he I mean, he really was genuinely passionate about it and wanted to do it right and wanted to do, wants to do it, you know, the best we can and loves it. And that's really, I don't really care what record label or whatever it is. It doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to be with good people and, um, and people that a lot of things fit in. I look at Porch Fair and I was attracted because they have so many different sounds. Um, like everything from, you know, dance music to, metal which it is i love so i just felt like uh it would be a good place to i want to be around good people and they seem like great people and so it's been nice yeah they're really cool i i i don't i mean i don't know any of them but uh like i remember i was supposed to go i was going to go to their showcase for south by um oh, yeah. and that was like one of the last things that got canceled um but it was looking really cool yeah, I, I, I have a hard time even knowing like who's on the label because I feel like they just work with everyone. Um, like they do live sessions with just like, rant, you know, they do them with Sun June and okay, Sun June's yeah. not on Porch Fire. But um, yeah, they're, they're super cool. Um, so I was just curious about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, so who who else um, did you collaborate with, with on the record? I mean, um, I guess like in terms of the music and also like, you know, you have that lyric book and... Um, the album art and all that stuff um uh a lot of the record so i did one song with hatchback who's an old buddy of mine um and he made one song um called idol with me and he did so much work i did a lot of that um so a lot of that is him um and then other people like my friend spencer garland played some guitar on a track my drummer in the band I play in the Oysters. He played drum on the two songs where there's drum. Um, Jim Campo ripped a solo on a song from Magic Rockers of Texas. In that Spanky D song, that's probably the most collaborations was Jim Campo played a guitar and my friend Julie Keller and Harrison Anderson did the voice acting, I guess. Uh, um, but yeah, a lot. I, I recorded the drums at a place called Feel Flow Studio. A lot of it was really just um just in a not this room I was in a different house but just in a small room like with a little it's on my desk but a little task cam thing most of us just recorded onto that um I, oh and Murray blonde sang a song, song with me um but collaborate collaboration really was in the art book but yeah was with will from porch fire and Murray blonde um she makes these beautiful like block prints so it's linoleum blocks and she carves them and you put ink on it and you put it on paper and she does a technique where you do it's called I'm not going to do it justice by talking about it because it's her art and it's so beautiful but um, like reduction printing where you take a piece this linoleum block you carve something you print it and then you carve a little bit more out you print a different color you cover a little bit more out so you get these layers of color and different designs and it's really beautiful um, but so that art booklet was definitely what, what feels like really collaborative because I was working closely with them on that that was really fun that's awesome yeah do you uh you have a really like unique way of playing guitar um so i was wondering like how how do you structure songs around that or do you like you know do you do you structure songs a different way like not around the guitar um i don't know it's just uh you, you seem to have a lot of parts going you know um and it seems to me because i play guitar as well so it seems to me like it would be hard for me to like piece things together um but the way you like structure songs is really cool so i was wondering if you had any like insight on that um so, um well thank you I, I think that's a compliment i appreciate it um i think i don't know i think it really depends on the song i mean some of them are pretty basic um you know, guitar, just strummy or plucky sort of thing. <laughs> but no, sometimes, um, sometimes there's definitely like, 
I feel like a lot of my favorite songs come from like a melody with guitar as I'm like strumming or playing and it just comes at once. That's like my favorite feeling, but that doesn't really happen. But I think maybe what, maybe what you're referring to is sometimes I really get inspired with like a guitar part or piece. Um, and that can be the most frustrating because you can get one or two really good pieces and you try to figure out where to go next. And um, that can be the hardest thing to do. So I don't know. It, it, I feel like my favorite way to do it, you know, make structure a song is to feel it out and just let it, it should, it, when it comes, that's like the best thing. But when you have like those guitar things, sometimes it, um, that can actually like really trip me up. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It makes really cool, like really cool, like unique songs though. Like just like what, what's the song? Uh, uh, let me go to the album really quick and see if I can pick out which one it is um maybe it's dead plants with the like super fast like little licks in between the strums is that the one perhaps <laughs> that, i mean that's the yeah yeah that's the one sorry uh i didn't know i meant like maybe that's what you're talking about but yeah that's the one with like little licks between yeah yeah that i like i would never think to do that it's so cool um oh, well, and yeah so just yeah that's what the kind of thing i was w wondering about uh but i uh, i feel like that one's like my I feel like I, well, I feel like that one sounds, well, never mind, nothing. <laughs> I like that one. Thank you. Yeah. But I feel like sure. I borrowed the most in my head from in that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I do. So do you, do you generally um, do instrumentals first or do you do lyrics come after the fact or is it more simultaneous? Uh, like I, like I was kind of saying, I like when they come together. It's kind of nice when a melody really fits the words or the words really fit the melody. And they kind of sound like each other in my head, but that doesn't really happen. Um, so typically I'll have like one good, well, not good, but what I think is nice in my head, I'll have some idea of like a word or, you know, a few words. And then it just kind of depends. A lot of the times, like you'll have that one main idea. And then you'll kind of get a structure going with harmony, like chords and stuff. And then you fit the words in. I mean, like a lot of this stuff, like I, what, you know, I kind of alluded to, but like a lot of these songs, like maybe had a verse written and I used to just play them and like write verses on the spot, like as I was playing and just feel them out. And I, or then I'd start to get more ideas for words and I start to get more ideas for form. And I kind of just developed them over time. I really, really love that sort of like when I play live, which, you know, not right now, but uh, I love sort of feeling that out like in the moment, because I feel like it just puts you on the spot. And if you just go for it, something's going to come out. And if you flub, you laugh. And if you don't, then maybe you'll, you'll probably forget it, but maybe it will be great. You know, like, so I, a lot of this record was through that process. I, I feel um, just like testing out different words and ideas for verses and, you might go to the show and feel like, oh, I'm going to talk about this in the second verse and then just try to feel it out. And sometimes you'll get like a good line or two. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, it's, wait, so is that is that something you do when the song is like already fleshed out or is it something like when you're playing live or do you just go out live to kind of um, when you're piecing the song together to uh, help you with well, the writing? I mean... I'll go, yeah, I'll, I might have an idea and I'll just try to figure it out that night. Just, or even just play 30 seconds of a song. Cause that's always fun for me. Maybe not for anyone else. No, but <laughs> I like doing that. I like figuring it out. And if you feel it, then you can go with it. And if you don't feel it, then take a breath and maybe take a sip of your bubbly water or beer and, uh, and then move on to the next one. <laughs> cool. What, uh, I was curious about, uh, uh, why you chose to do um this might be a dumb question because both versions are great but um Wes, there are no dumb <laughs> oh come on there's no dumb question <laughs> uh yeah I, was, I guess i was just i was curious about like the the choice of like doing two different versions of of drifted oh um, how could you ask me that man what kind of question no. <laughs> uh, sorry I, I was only being facetious did i cut you off no, you're good. No, no, that's the question. <laughs> uh, I just, they both are special to me. And 
they've both been played like the way they sound ish. And um, yeah, they're very different, but um, they're just both special to me. I think that's the best way to put it. Very cool. So one of my favorites up from the Thank record you. for sure. Thank you. Um, super cool. Great opening too. Like so hard at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> so sick. Oh, um, speaking of your book, uh, that version, like that loud rock version, uh, that was played when I put out my last record, you know, we had a big bash or whatever at hole in the wall and the band we had going for that night was Billy and the bath mats and your friend and Jack was in, was playing keys that night. Is he in that band? I don't know that band. It, it was a one night band. It was a one night Word. band. Okay. Billy and the bath mats was the name of the, the group we were playing us. And so, but we played that song. And so I really liked the, the loud arrangement of it and yeah, it felt good. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. man. Great song. Um, you. Did you, uh, um, for, for that song forever, like is there, there's strings on that. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. So who are, do you arrange that kind of thing or do you have bring in someone who like plays violin or whatever to, to handle that? I should have mentioned, yeah, that's my, that's a friend from high school. Um, his name's Gabe Trasiano. He's in New York City. He's amazing. Y'all look him up. He just put a record out. He's like this amazing jazz violinist. He can play anything, but he does a lot of jazz violin. But um, he arranged all that stuff. And that was, um, we hadn't talked in so many, like we were in our high school band together and I probably haven't talked to him in eight or nine years. And I just called him up or texted him or something. I said, did you want to try something? And he was, you know, it was over the summer and he was like starting to get his recording set up, set up because he had to do that to make money and figure out, you know, like how are we going to get through this next digital age? And so he was setting up a recording thing. He's like, yeah. And um, we tried it and it was really cool. Yeah. yeah, I love how it interacts with all the other parts like there at the beginning of the song. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, so cool. Uh, uh, do you, uh, That's sorry, Gabe. he's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cool. I'll have to, yeah, I'll I'll look for his record. It's, yeah, um, it's pretty pretty wild. He's pretty amazing at violin. It's pretty cool. Nice. I used to play in high school. Cool. I guess middle school too, but I was, I I kind of haven't played in years. But do you play guitar um, now? You said. Yeah, cool. I do. Yeah. Do you play in a group or anything, or do you have your own music out there? I so I did a I did a cover album uh, last summer. Uh, it's kind of like one of my like ways to handle the boredom of being in quarantine, and because um, I was playing guitar a lot, and I wanted to hear all the parts come together. I guess like I was like I want to. I wish I had a band who could cover these songs with me, and so I just recorded it all on GarageBand and put it on Bandcamp. It's pretty Is bad, it but your name? Um, yeah, in the world. Um, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I mean, so after that, uh, I guess what I was trying to get to is my, um, my friend from the radio station asked me to start a band. Um, so we're in the mixing pr uh, process of an EP right now. Cool. Um, me and my friend Rhea and my buddy Nico, um, we don't have a name yet, so I would plug it. I'd plug it, but I don't right. have, we don't I mean, have a that, name. That's so. awesome. I hope you send that yeah. one away. What well, are you feeling totally. proud of? the work and the songs and the definitely awesome. uh, I, I feel kind of bad for talking about myself but no i don't um, i don't i i prefer that i like that <laughs> cool yeah cool it's cool when people ask about it um because yeah it, it's a uh, we're very it's we we've we started like a year ago almost so it's kind of like getting like like okay we gotta wrap this up it's like four songs um because we cut a lot of songs that we wrote and um we're kind of all ready for it to be done, but, um, it's, I'm, I'm really stoked about it. My friend Rhea sings and like writes, um, all the lyrics and melodies and everything. So I just kind of more in the lead guitar role, which is not really my like realm necessarily, but I'm kind of like playing that role, which is cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah. That's really cool. I'd say, uh, I, I know it, it's like when you've heard it, how many times have you listened to it? Like a billion times? So just, many times. <laughs> yeah. It feels pretty rotten, doesn't it? Like <laughs> nothing changes. Yeah. Especially when I'm not mixing it. Yeah. Just, oh, really? Damn. No. Yeah. My, we're having a friend mix it. And so I'm kind of like, we're kind of at the will and mercy of, of him. 
and so that's nice your hands are kind of off it maybe yeah but they've been off for so long so it's kind of like um i don't know because they're adding some like last minute arrangements and stuff so i'm kind of like i don't know i just sit there and listen to the version that i have on my laptop all the time Um, that's cool that's exciting dude yeah cool glad you think so <laughs> like the singer guitar and then the lot you said a third person right yeah my buddy nico plays keys cool. um he's yeah he's awesome but this uh, like arrangement this instrumentation kind of fascinates me is there is there like drums or bass or a rhythm section so uh yeah there's a couple songs that are like guitar based and two that are piano based and there's live drums on a couple tracks which was super cool to record. Um, and um, we have like, there's like drums and bass on a, on, there's bass on every song, but there's drums on a couple songs. But like we, like Nico just played the bass and his roommate played the drums. So it's like, oh. not everyone is like in the band who like plays on it, I guess. But um, yeah, I'm pretty much just doing the the lead guitar, which is funny um shred it <laughs> a little I try to <laughs> i'm not much of a shredder but Damn, like way too loud and everyone's trying to sleep <laughs> yeah um but hopefully hopefully we can play some some house shows or something <laughs> when it, when it's safe whatever um, yeah i know it's kind yeah. of a weird thought right <laughs> yeah i mean we're all vaccinated so Good. we're you know maybe we'll just get our friends together um Good. so uh sorry to yeah, talking about no, myself no. for so long. That's beat. No, that's I prefer you. I I like that. That's great. That's cool. cool. I appreciate you asking. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm curious. Uh, do you have a? Is there something uh, you're you're most proud about about uh, about the album, or even or if if not that, just like a song you're most proud of, maybe? Um, I don't want to spoil any songs for anyone, so I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. um but i am definitely just most proud of um I'm, i think i'm just proud that's a that's a that's kind of something i've been thinking about is just being proud of making something and um you know i've been part of making records before and stuff but this one felt like the most obviously I was in the most control on this one and I got to do most of that. And I had some people play a little bit here and there, oh, a lot of it here and there, but um, I'm not trying to say that, but it felt like I really did something with my own uh, capabilities and limitations and not limit, you know, whatever I had, like I was able to do it and that um, feels great. And it feels, and all the songs I feel proud of and I like, uh, they've been a part of this chapter of my life and I'm really proud, you know, I'm excited that it's, it's there. It's done. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so yeah. cool. Like I, that's something I think about a lot is like, um, you know, looking at like something I've made or, um, you know, I'm an RTF student at UT. So nice. like short film I've worked on or like music I've made or, you know, interviews I've done. And it's like, wow, like I'll be able to look back at this, in 20 years and be like you know it's on a hard drive or something i'm like wow this is like me in my 20s this is cool yeah um, it yeah. is cool and honestly like all this stuff it's like whatever but if you make it and you put your heart into it that's all that really matters it doesn't really like i don't know nothing at this point now matters too much as far as the record goes it's done so i feel proud of what i put into it and what came out of it um and that's that feels good for sure yeah. i uh, i i uh, i guess search some questions about like the awesome music scene mm-hmm. uh what uh what's your favorite venue to play at in town or just to go to shows at hole in the wall for sure that's awesome i i i just uh recently turned 21 hey. and that's where I, I went there on my on my 21st Happy birthday birthday what's your birthday oh thanks it was April, April 10th. April 10th. <laughs> I have. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I know someone born on that day. That's cool. Happy 21st birthday. Thanks. <laughs> I did. Well, Good. I had something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it was a beer. Uh-oh. It wasn't a beer. 
Uh, but I haven't been to a show at Hole in the Wall. Um, I remember my freshman year. Um, Got to keep making this about myself. but um, I totally prefer that. Trust me. <laughs> uh, I, one of this, this band I was supposed to interview, uh, it was like the first band I was going to interview. They were in town. Um, they're like touring from New Jersey and they're playing at Hole in the Wall. And I was like, man, I can't even go to the show. And like, I was like going to interview them. And they were like, hey, man, they're calling me like, hey, uh, do you know anywhere else we can play? This place is 21 up. And like all our fans are like <laughs> not 21. Oh, <laughs> uh, so it was pretty bizarre. You and now they're like, to play? did they play at a house or something? No, I didn't. Have, I was like two months into me living into Aust- in Austin. And I like didn't know how to help them, you know, because I wasn't yeah. tapped in uh well enough so but it was just i was like it's uh, i'm from denton texas um so yeah but i didn't really know how to help but so they ended up playing they came back and because they had a week off or something and they played carousel lounge which was you know all ages and free um and so we went to that but um and they also played a session at kvrx so i got to see them play but cool nice um yeah they're great the happy fits good band okay cool um I love those yeah. KBRX sessions. That's a, such a fun little studio in there. Yeah, there's a, yeah, they did a library session. Oh, cool. Um, and we, you know, there's also, we have like local live and like the in-studio stuff. Um, so there's a nice variety. Yeah. Um, but it's, we've been doing local live outdoors at someone's house um, because of, uh, it's a, because we can't be in the studio. So yeah, um, it's been cool. Hey, Cowboy was on nice um, Go a lot of cool cowboy. bands yeah. yeah um for sure what <laughs> i'm curious like what uh what are your if you don't mind me asking like what are your likes and dislikes of of the awesome music scene and, and like did you how did you like you've been here for a while so like how, how did you find um it was like was it hard to tap into since it's so saturated i've i've been here changing for a long time no i'm kidding uh that's a bad joke uh that's a self <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> um, what do i like and what do i not like and what and was it hard to be a part of it um well i will speak to i i i really just got i got here and then i went to i didn't know anyone in austin and i went to a bunch of open mics and just biked around the city with and just went to open mics which is not Oh, it's not the music scene I know as much anymore um, because, but then I fortunately met some awesome people just kind of by happenstance, like through my work, someone came in that was a friend of someone and where I was working at the time and I was started talking to them and we just really clicked and started making music. And then she plugged me into everyone she knew and just started making music. Um, I like that there's a lot of music in Austin. I think that's great. I think that there's a lot of different types of music. There's a lot of different types of scenes. I think I know like one or two of those scenes maybe. And, but there's a lot of other stuff. I mean, you can, when it, you know, I'm speaking when there's no COVID going on. <laughs> there's not a like global pandemic, but you could play any night of the week. You could enjoy music in whatever way you want to enjoy it. And that's great. Um, and then I've been fortunate enough to like meet really talented people that are doing it for like just straight from their heart. And that's a great thing. I meet some of those people and I've been really lucky to be around some of those people and that's great. And then dislikes, you know, I'm, I probably shouldn't go there, <laughs> but what, what don't, you know, probably anything you think of when you don't like certain things and you can apply to the music scene in Austin. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't, yeah, I definitely don't, I would not push you to, to speak on anything you don't want to. Um, I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> do you have any advice for people like who are um, trying to get into the scene, seeing like things to watch out for in retrospect or like, you know, like practice your scales Make sure you're waking up early and get really kicking that guitar into overdrive. Uh, some extra pedals can go a long way. Bigger the amp, the louder it's going to be. So get a really big amp. Uh, pretty much anything like that is probably good. No, uh, no, any, no, just 
just talk to people, go to shows and talk to people. That's really all you can do. That, that's the same with anything. Like if you want to be a writer, go talk to people that write books. But if you, if you want to be part of the Austin awesome music scene, if you want to like play or listen or just be around, you know, like if any part, whatever part you want to be, just go to, go be around those people that are doing it. And a lot of those times people are just going to absorb you and love you for being there. And that's about it. Um, Very cool. And I feel like that's just the only thing you got to do. If I mean, it's, it's easier said than done. That's hard to do, but that's the best. That, I think that's the best way to, to go out there and do it is just be around it. It's not going to. And then honestly, the other best thing, just make, if you're going to be part of the music scene where you're making music, just make it from your heart and do it for what it really means to you, which can be many different things for many different people, but just do it from your heart. And that should, that should be good enough wherever you are. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, that's like what? a really like dad piece of advice or something or mom no, piece of advice. That's or super helpful. Advice. But I mean, it's real. Like, you know, don't just, <laughs> I don't know, you know, make music for fun and, and have, and love it. And that's about it. <laughs> and if you're doing that, that's going to be the best thing. It doesn't matter who's there, who's not there <laughs> or where you are. Awesome. Uh, would you, uh, do you have anybody, uh, that you think um, we should look out for in terms of like Austin musicians or even like just creative people in Austin, like in other outlets of creativity, I guess. Um, look out for like in a good way or a bad way. In a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. Cause yeah, <laughs> they're uh, dangerous. Uh, sure. Um, I feel like if I start listing people, then I'm going to forget someone, but look out for a uh, Marae blonde she makes beautiful art um she does the block prints for the the record book and does a lot of art i think her her instagram is at little crying clouds so she makes beautiful art check that out um and then i could list like a bunch of musicians i feel but i feel like i left them out but i don't know um pr newman is wonderful magic arcas of texas are wonderful uh, Smile is wonderful. Mary Bryce is wonderful. Um, Harrison Anderson, uh, Duncan Fellows, of course. Uh, I don't know. Blair, uh, Ama makes great music. A lot of people make great music. I'm trying to think. I, I just listed a couple that come to my head, but there's like a million more that I'm not saying. And I'm going to feel badly for not saying them later, but you know how it is. <laughs> Sorry to put the, the pressure no, on no. you. No, it's, it's all good. Um, someone just I, put out a record that I love and I'm forgetting it right now. Yeah. There's a lot of music coming out, uh, in Austin. Do you follow, um, that page, Austin D music? No, I don't. They, they post, they, well, during, I guess they're doing it again now. Oh, but before, oh Austin indie music. Yeah. But it's like yeah. the words are pushed together. Right. Right. Um, I think I, are they on Instagram? Yeah. 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 They, yeah. They're so helpful. They're the best. Yeah. They, uh well they used to post set times but um i guess they're doing it now again but they're um i keep going there like seems like today and like a you know week or two ago there was like just a flood of albums that came out and they're like sharing them which is really yeah. cool um they're actually, always so great they always give love and that's really cool for that's sure an example of like the, i think they just go to i don't even know who it is but they're always like posting when I play or when the band I play and plays and it's so like, feels great. And I, I, that's just an example of someone going out there and doing something that's really helpful and being part of the music scene. Like you're asking before, it's just going out and being part of it in whatever way you want to be. And they definitely just seems like they're, they just know about every darn show that's going on. So it's really cool. Yeah. It's super impressive. I, uh, I used to intern with her actually at margin Walker. Oh, um, cool. her name's Shelby. She's, she's really cool. Um, but <clears throat> well, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, shout out to Shelby. Thank you, Shelby. Um, uh, what What are the best ways that um, people can support you right now? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm thinking about a lot of different answers to that one. The best ways you could support me are. Um, 
musically speaking, I just, you know, you could listen to my music if it spoke to you. Uh, but just don't worry so much about me. And I would say, try to do good things for whoever's around you in your community. And that would be the best thing for me. <laughs> but just try to take care of each other. I feel like that's what's missing. If you're talking about musically, you know, listen to my record would be great. There's an art booklet that's um, I'm really proud of. A lot of hard work from me and, you know, Will and Ray went into that. That's really cool. Um, but, yeah. Do you have anything um, coming up that you that you want to plug? I, it seems, uh, were you guys, were you recording a, a session for Porch Fire? Oh, yeah, that will be coming out. Um, yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, I'm pretty excited. One of the songs we recorded, I recorded with some of my friends, um, Jake and Mary, Mary Bryce and Jake Miles. And uh, it was the first time I've sung harmony with people in a long time. And it was, uh, it just feels beautiful to like play music with people again. Um, because, you know, we were safe and vaxxed and took precautions and it just felt really special. And um, I don't know what it looks like or sounds like, so I'm excited to see that. Um, and then, you know, nothing else. And I don't, I'm not quite ready to play shows. I don't, I don't think that's where I'm at yet, but um, so nothing like that though. For sure. Yeah. That's awesome. I know they, they were, uh, Porch Fire did the, the Sun June KEXP session. Looks pretty which awesome, is awesome, right? For I'm sure, sure that's a cool video. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, well, I, I mean, thanks for doing this, man. I, I love your album. And for that matter, your album Thank before you. this. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, saw you release the album and I was like, man, I gotta, gotta ask him for the interview. Well, that's um, great. Thank <laughs> you so much. That means, uh, that really means a lot. I really appreciate that. For sure. I, that's really cool um yeah <laughs> hell yeah um yeah well uh you know uh just last minute plug uh it's been here changing for a long time william maxwell the new album uh it's available wherever you listen to music and uh if you have the means you should acquire it or the lyrics book uh which is really cool from porch fire um and yeah, Thank you, thanks Wes. for doing this. This has been everyone, awesome. Ch- oh, bands to look uh, out for. Wes's unnamed band that's coming pretty soon. <laughs> right? That's coming. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, hopefully over the summer. And we'll come up with a name. We have like a big document of like all these like words smashed together. Word smashes? Um, like God smack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing that uh, heavy okay. metal or. I don't even know what type of music God. <laughs> yeah, it's but, hard to put a thumb um, on that one. Yeah, um, but hopefully, hopefully in the near future. Um, and uh, well, also my my bandmate Rhea makes a music under the name Quiet Light, which is very Watch good. For so that's a plug. Yeah.